Hello, Alaska. My name is Ken. I'm a seismologist with the Alaska Earthquake Center. Uh, as you can probably tell, I, I'm working at home today, and that's in response to state and university guidance on remote work during the COVID-19 outbreak. Now, just because our seismologist can't go into the office, as you can imagine, that doesn't mean that earthquakes are stopping in Alaska. Uh, so what I wanted to share with you today is a little bit about how we're able to continue our mission of seismic monitoring and providing earthquake information to the public uh, while we're all out of the office and working remotely. And so how we're able to do that, uh, I'm just going about my work day today and I just have a small laptop here, uh, but that laptop is connected back to the seismic acquisition systems at the Alaska Earthquake Center. So how seismic monitoring works is that we have hundreds of seismic sensors scattered all over the state of Alaska, and there's real-time data from each of those sensors streaming back into the Alaska Earthquake Center uh, over on campus. And while I sit here and talk to you, uh, we have computer systems that are analyzing that data and are using that data to locate uh, the location and, and size of earthquakes all over the state. And as soon as those solutions become available, uh, they get thrown up on a list here on the computer system, and I'm able to see uh, the latest earthquakes uh, right here on my laptop um, at home. And as you can see, you know, on average, we locate about 100 or so earthquakes a day at the Alaska Earthquake Center. And so it looks like the last one was maybe about 30 minutes ago at uh, nine minutes past two. And that was an earthquake out in the Western Alaska range. And it was small, it was a magnitude 1.2 or so. And so even if you were very close to this earthquake, uh, you wouldn't feel that. And the majority of the earthquakes that we locate are small. And so part of my work day today is I'm just looking through these computer generated solutions and making sure that they're high quality solutions because the computer, it does a great job 90% of the time, but occasionally it'll just miss one. And so a human seismologist like myself will clean that solution up. So I'm just looking through here and uh, you know, most of them look pretty good, uh, but then I spot this one and I'm, I'm looking at the waveforms over here. Uh, these are seismic traces from, from individual seismic stations. And it looks to me like the computer kind of missed this one. Uh, things aren't lining up too well. And so I'm gonna add a little information uh, to this solution and see if I can improve on what the computer did. And it just takes a little while for the waveforms to come up, uh, but, but there they are. And all I'm doing here is I'm adding timing information. Uh, when did the seismic wave arrive at the particular uh, seismic station? And that's the, the fundamental quality that, fundamental quantity that we use to, to locate earthquakes. So I've added a little bit of information and then I'll just go over here and I'll hit locate and the computer does, a, does the math. It, it does a process called inversion, which is just sort of the, the worst story problem you can imagine. Uh, but the computer handles all of that for me. And I, I like that solution better. That looks better. And then I'll click the magnitude button and that's going to uh, compute the magnitude for this quake. So again, another small one, the, the average magnitude of all, all the stations that recorded this event is about 1.36. And so I'll, I'll save that and I'll say save for this solution. And I will send that solution uh, back to the center. And that updated solution will get reflected here on our website. And so if you go to earthquake.alaska.edu and look at uh, the latest seismicity in Alaska, a, a lot of these solutions are computer generated, but every one of these gets looked at by human seismologists. And if it's not a good solution, we'll correct it in the manner that I, I just showed you. So you're always getting human reviewed best information here on the website. So that's one aspect of, of what the duty seismologist does. But the other aspect of it is 
well, what if it's not a 1.2 that, that no one felt? You know, what if it's a significant event like the magnitude 7.1 uh, that struck Anchorage back in 2018, or even a magnitude four aftershock from that event that a lot of people felt and want to know about. So if that happens, the computer is pretty smart and it'll say, well, this is a significant event and it's going to let me know very quickly. And it does that uh, just sending a message to uh, the cell phone. So the duty seismologist always has the cell phone with them. Uh, you know, when I go to bed at night, when I go to bed tonight, I'll, I'll lay this down on my bedside table, and, and if, if there's a significant event, uh, this will let me know with a very loud, obnoxious ringing that'll, that'll wake even me up at 4 a.m. And so when that happens, I'll rush up here, I'll go through the process that I just showed you, making sure that the, the solution's very good, and then within a few minutes of the earthquake occurring, uh, we'll send out information to our website, to Facebook, to Twitter, uh, so that the, the public knows what's going on um, with, with respect to the earthquake. So that's just a little bit about what the duty seismologist does. And, and just to re reiterate the fact that even though us seismologists aren't in the office because of COVID-19, uh, our mission continues, we're still listening and we're still gonna provide you with timely and, and accurate earthquake information. Uh, if you'd like to know more about our COVID-19 response, uh, the state seismologist, Mike West, has written a document uh, out outlining our procedures uh, with respect to COVID, and we'll link to that document um, in the post associated with this video. Uh, so I encourage you to look at that, and thanks very much for tuning in today. Bye-bye.